Today on The Science of Car Care, we're going to be discussing the differences between hydrophobic, hydrophilic, and oleophobic, and how it applies to car care. So let's get into it. So before we get into the specifics of hydrophobics and hydrophilics, let me first touch on a couple concepts about water and how it interacts with different surfaces. So we know from science class that magnets have a negative and a positive charge. This is what's known as a polar object because it contains both a positive and a negative charge that are balanced. Water, in similarity, has a negative, slightly negative oxygen atom and two slightly positive hydrogen atom. Much like a magnet, water is a polar compound, polar molecule. You can think of it like this, where there's basically a polar charge separated by a positive and a negative. And because water has both a negative and positive charge, they balance each other out, which is now a neutral compound. So now we know that water is a polar compound and it carries charge to it. So when we throw in another water molecule that is next to it, because the other water molecule, also polar, has a tendency to want to attract to the positive pole of the other water molecule. So water has a tendency to want to stick to itself more than nonpolar objects, which don't carry a charge. If we have a hydrophobic nonpolar surface and we drop a bead of water onto it, water will have a tendency to want to stick to itself in this nice spherical droplet rather than trying to spread out evenly onto the underlying surface. The more hydrophobic the coating is, the more spherical the water droplet will be and therefore the higher the contact angle will be. In this case, I'm gonna draw it with a black marker. The contact angle is basically this angle right here with the surface here, so this angle. So the bigger that contact angle, the more hydrophobic the surface. When we have a hydrophilic surface, hydrophilic surfaces will also be slightly polar. So let's just, so we don't confuse ourselves. Draw a little negative and positives. I'm just gonna draw a little line there so we know that it's a surface like maybe your car hood for example water now will come down onto this hydrophilic surface and want to spread out because we have these negative and positive charges that will interact with these negative and positive charges onto the surface water comes down and it'll form kind of more of a more of a wide spread out droplet instead of a nice bead like it would on a hydrophobic surface now we're going to talk about oleophobic oleophobic coatings tend to repel oil. For something to repel oil, oil is nonpolar, therefore the oleophobic coating would be polar. So if oil comes down, an oil droplet comes down onto an oleophobic surface, which is polar, oil will have a tendency to form a droplet. That is because oil has a tendency to stick to itself, which is itself nonpolar. It prefers to interact with another nonpolar species than interact with a polar surface underneath. So now that we've looked at oleophobic coatings and surfaces, you can probably see already that this looks a lot like a hydrophilic surface. That is because oftentimes oleophobic and hydrophilic could be the same thing. They're polar surfaces that repel oil but attract water. Much like a hydrophobic surface interaction with water, the more oleophobic a surface is, the more spherical and oil droplet will be when it interacts with it and therefore the higher contact angle will be as well. Now that we've gotten all the science stuff out of the way, let's now talk about how these different coatings apply to car care and more specifically to you. So hydrophobic coatings that will repel water are obviously very useful in products like ceramic coatings or detailers. Things are going to protect the paint from water on a daily basis or every so often when it rains or if you pressure wash your car or wash your car regularly, it's going to repel water and keep your car nice and clean. Hydrophilic coatings are really useful in applications like anti-fog coatings. When you have a hydrophilic surface, water will have a tendency again to sheet out or wet out onto the surface and spread very, very quickly because it's interacted with that polar surface. Anti-fog coatings work really well on the inside of your windshield because the amount of steam is actually relatively low. So the second a little bit of steam 
or water vapor hits the surface, it wets out really quickly and dissipates. If you have a hydrophilic coating on the outside of your windshield and it rains, there's a lot of water there. So if it cheats out too quickly with a lot of water, it'll actually start to distort the image uh, that you see through the windshield. So ideally, you want hydrophobic on the outside of your windshield to repel the water, and you want hydrophilic on the inside to sheet the water so that steam doesn't build up on the inside of your windshield. So last but not least, why would you ever want oleophobic coatings? Well, as we learned earlier, oleophobic and hydrophilic tend to be uh, the same thing, and often hydrophilic and hydrophobic are in direct contrast with one another. However, oleophobic coatings can be really good to repel dust and oils from your car, a good example of this is when you get your cell phone for the first time, when you open it up out of the, out of the package, a lot of times companies will put an oleophobic coating onto the outside of it to prevent fingerprints from accumulating and dust from accumulating. The problem with both hydrophilic coatings and oleophobic coatings is they don't tend to last very long because water will interact really strongly with those types of coatings. And as there's a lot of water vapor in the air, a lot of times water will basically stick to the surface, start to dissolve that coating, and then run off when the, when the water does. So last but not least, we get a lot of questions about whether our hydrophobic coatings are also oleophobic coatings. Well, a lot of times those two are in direct contrast with one another, in direct competition with one another. When you have an oleophobic coating, like I said earlier, it's oftentimes a hydrophilic coating as well. So if it likes water and hates water, a lot of times you can't have those types of interactions. Good example of a both oleophobic and hydrophobic coating or Teflon coated would be like your nonstick pans, although those coatings are being phased out slowly but surely. However, those Teflon pans will sort of repel oil, but it'll also repel water and make things very slippery for you to cook your food on. One drawback to Teflon and PTFE, however, is that Teflon can be a little bit tacky. So while water and oil both repel from it and form nice little beaded droplets, water has a tendency to kind of grab onto it and not slide off quite as well. So good beads, but not as good of a slide. So what about hydrophobic ceramic coatings that are also oleophobic? Well, that's not usually true per se, However, because of ceramic coating's ability to seal your paint in, they can actually help things adhere less strongly to the paint and clear coat, thereby making it easier to clean or be more self-cleaning in the long term. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Science of Car Care, where we discuss the differences between oleophobic, hydrophobic, and hydrophilic coatings. If you like this video, leave a comment below. If you were confused, uh, feel free to leave a timestamp uh, below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.